Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode we're going to begin with the Bilbo probe and it is making its mid-course adjustment on its way into Venus. And this will be a Venus flyby so we really need to make sure that we come into Venus with a very low periapsis. We already have a periapsis there. If we focus on Venus right now we see that this burn is meant to go from uh, this pass which is way too high to fulfill the contract to this pass which will have a periapsis of 800 kilometers and we have plotted the possibility of getting into orbit but I'm not too sure that's possible we only have 129 units of hydrazine uh, the 203 meters per second you see here doesn't include the hydrazine in this tank here which I can't click on. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, which is 56 units. So we've got the possibility of having enough to make orbit, but no guarantees. But that's alright, the contract just said flyby. Anyway, I've already plot I have already passed the maneuver node. So let me uh, try and be more accurate about this. However, I have to keep in mind that I have a two and a half minute delay on my signal. So yeah, I'm already late, but that's because I jumped here from the curb alarm clock. I was just time warping merrily, and curb alarm clock only gave me a minute worth of warning. It's on or off. There's no throttling. I have to remind myself of that occasionally. Okay, let's see how that worked. Oh, not bad. Not quite the inclination I was going for. But we're at uh, one, one thousand one hundred forty-seven, forty-eight kilometers. Maybe a little bit of a RCS touch-up will do the trick. I don't think we need to get too much closer than that. We are trying to scan the surface. I mean, not scan, but we're trying to do science. So it's better to hit as many biomes. I don't know how many biomes there might be on Venus, but better to hit as many as possible. This is about the same periapsis we had plotted. Alright, so that's a successful mid-course plane change. And we've got this SOI change here, but that's probably wrong now. Yeah, we've got a different time for the SOI change, so we'll pay attention once the Bilbo gets within Venus SOI. Okay, so on it goes. Next thing, we're going to look for the Astrid 4 to get complete and our uncrewed moon flyby test. Okay, so here we go. Let's just warp to completion on the Astrid 4 and make sure not to put a Kerbal in this time. This one should have a probe core. We've got an all probe 1 still cooking after that. Uh, we've got a Mars opportunity there, but the all probe 1 doesn't have the communication capability for that. We were intending to send that one over to the moon. We'll see. I might, uh, might want to rework it and turn it into a Mars mission instead. Okay, let's roll that out. Okay, here we are. Throttle up. SAS on. And actually we need to line up with the moon. I mean, we don't need to need to, but for fuel's sake it would be preferable. And of course with the real mission we definitely want to because that will shorten the trip. If you do um, off-plane transfer, it takes a bit longer, and that'll cost us extra supplies. Okay, so targeted the moon. Uh, looks like we need to uh, get our pump on, but it's going to try and fill up that oxygen tank, isn't it? Dang it. Hmm. Oh, well, if it's just electric electricity on... Well, it's just not giving us enough electricity. I guess I'm going to have to allow that to deplete. Yeah. Doesn't look like we have boil off otherwise. Okay, that's good enough for me. We've lost uh, maybe 4,000 units of electric charge. Not horrible. Okay, throttle back up again. Alarm clock is not necessary. Okay. Well, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Upon 
pounds there, but otherwise going quite well. As usual, we have a overheating marker on the capsule. Never, never the sign I want, but probably not a problem. Okay, handing over to Smart ASS. Okay, we are at Mach 1, and all systems are nominal. Looking good. The uh, Stage Delta V seems to be reading the center portion instead of reading the boosters separately. They'll separate well before 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, everything seems fine. 22 kilometers getting up there in Mach, Mach 2.5 or so. Acceleration is fine. We'll probably hit 4 G's of acceleration, I'm sure, but it's not beyond that. Oh, uh, boosters are out. Again, had a kerosene imbalance that caught me by surprise. We need to fix that. They had extra kerosene in them. We saw that on the last launch, but I forgot to fix it. Anyway, they are off safely. Now we have a minute and a half left on this stage. The question on my mind right now is how the launch tower will separate. I'll try and do it through normal staging, but I don't know if it'll work or not. Separation. Okay, and ignition. Uh, let's try that again. Ignition. And this stage is really, really quiet. Okay, let's try normal staging to separate the launch tower. Okay, well that's good. Alright, so we can do that. We are in space now. I'll recycle Smart ASS to make sure it has orientation control. Alright, and so remember, we're mainly going to be controlled by this ABLE avionics package there. I think that does not have SAS control, but we'll be using Smart ASS instead. Okay, we are within the last minute of this extremely quiet burn. And after this, we'll have to burn about a thousand meters per second off of the next stage our transfer stage. That'll leave us with about a hundred meters per second short on the transfer, so we'll have to do that with the service module on the pod itself. The service module has about 600 meters per second. So we should be able to do it. And I was planning to finish the burn with the service module anyway because you need to make fine-tune adjustments to make sure you get the the free return trajectory correct. But uh, the less of that we use the better, but I think this is going to be alright. Okay, 2 G's of acceleration is fine at this stage. I'll cycle Smart ASS off now. And separation. And ignition. Alright. The antennae in here can't be deployed right now, but these can. So that's why I'm deploying there. So here we have the... I'll just call it an RD-58. We technically don't have that upgrade yet. We've got the... I forget which version it is. Okay, here we go. We are approaching orbit here. Let's moderate our pitch. We're still technically going down here. Uh, things get a little bit fast as we come to the end, though not very fast. Our acceleration is 0.4 G's only. Still got a healthy amount in the transfer stage, actually. We need about 3,100 for the transfer. Okay, getting ready for a cutoff here. Okay, that'll do. 
246 by 205. We are in orbit with 3,000 meters per second left in this stage, which is excellent. Okay. Um, I forget if the solar panels... I think just these are action grouped. I don't want solar panels smashing into the fairings. But I think there aren't any solar panels on the service module. They're just up here. Okay. All configured. Let's plot for the moon. Okay, so what I have plotted here is an approach to the moon at 371 kilometers, which is a bit high, but it preserves a free return over to Earth at 137 kilometers, which is also a bit high, but we can do minor burns in order to correct uh, that side of it. Uh, taking a look at our contract, we only need to get within 5,000 kilometers, so we're definitely doing that. No problems there. Uh, all the problems will be over at the Earth side where we have to aerobrake and do all that sort of thing. So we'll have to see about that. Aerobrake first. I, I think we're going to have to aerobrake first and then go around again to re-enter. So that is the plan. 3,154.8 meters per second. And we will see how that goes. Obviously going to have to do some fine tuning during the burn. And we have to sell the fuel down on this engine. Right now it's very unstable. But our turn seems to be improving that situation a bit. So that's good. And we are very stable now. Okay, ignition. And no. I do ignition before the telling Smarty SS to hold the node because then it'll use the engine gimbling on here, otherwise it'll fire the RCS thrusters a whole lot. Up, oh, off we go again to the moon. Of course, the big question marks are all back when we return and whether the pod can survive the return. Okay, 12 seconds left in this stage, and then we have to switch to the next stage. It looks like I'm going to use a little bit more of the service module than I thought, about 180 meters per second rather than just 100, but let's take a good look at that, because our apoapsis is already at 100,000 kilometers, so maybe the plot is not working out the way it should have. It's possible that we won't need as much as is indicated by this number here. Okay, RCS on, set. Okay. Okay. Alright. And ignition. Okay, now this one has its antennae out, and let's get its solar panels out. Not the ones in the pod though, we'll reserve those for when we ditch the service module. So we do have a full service service module. The RCS ports aren't placed particularly well, considering they're pretty much blocked by the solar panel stuff. Oh well. Okay, so that's how that looks. Let's see now. Yeah, still got a long way to go. Now remember, we do have additional fuel that is locked, that is in this pod. Right, we've got 100 units of hydrazine here, and then 30 units of HTP for the pod's own native thrusters. We've got little thrusters on top here for orientation during retro, uh, during uh, reentry. There's the able avionics package, and there is the food, water, and oxygen. There's also food, water, and oxygen here. So we really should shut off this food, water, and oxygen. Or, well, let's not do that. We'll just move move the stuff up. Let me verify that stuff can be moved up. Forget if I've unlocked that or not. 
it looks like stuff can't be moved up. So for now, I'm going to lock this food. Well, it doesn't matter. We're not going to. Well, we're not going to be consuming these. But when we do the crude mission, I'll have to make sure to lock that top one, so that we don't use it prematurely. Not a bad spacecraft, all things considered. Certainly not what you'd expect for a lunar mission. And yeah, obviously this pod is not your normal lunar pod. It's really pushing it to send this so far up, but that's the technology we've got and that's where we are with our contracts, so this is what we've got to do. Let me just use... Oh, I don't have SAS, so we're going to have to have Smart ESS hold on to that. Take off the time warp. Okay, going right through the moon now. And around the other side. There we go. Don't have throttling, so I'm going to shut off. And, well, it looks a little bit off from what I planned. But let's try and preserve the low periapsis on this side as long as the moon periapsis doesn't get above 5,000 kilometers. So, not as good as I would have hoped, but. Okay, um, I'll go with 67 for now. That's a bit low if we want to do the go around one time and then come in a second time thing. We'll make further adjustments later. It's a little bit hard to make any adjustment right now. Okay, so we'll be under a thousand kilometers. So that's good. Okay, everything looks all right. Let's see how the power situation is once we get into sunlight. And we are sort of spinning around here. Okay, so we definitely want to uh, have the stuff facing the sun. We have enough electric charge. We have 22 days. And of course, that's, that's because I was, well, afraid of being out of charge. We know where that comes from. Uh, in fact, uh, do I have charge down here? I forget. Yes, I do. Got plenty of electric charge here. I'm going to lock the pod's electric charge since I don't know if I can transfer that. Not quite a barbecue roll. Hmm. Spin stabilize in a different direction, maybe? Okay, so I'm going to try and sort of spin stabilize here. Hope oh, that wouldn't be too uncomfortable for a potential Kerbal. We got a time warp, so it's going to look a lot faster than it is. Sort of working out for us. Persistent rotation doesn't have to be a chore. Maybe. Okay. Well, we're still oriented properly. Tail facing the sun, spinning so that we are stabilized. Um, no reason to change that. Our periapsis is, our periapsis is as intended. And taking a look at our periapsis around the Earth, we see that we've got 110 kilometers, which is not bad. We'll adjust that once we get out of lunar SOI. Oh, it seems like we've gotten a little bit awry here on our orientation. What just happened? Oh, oh uh, no. Hmm. We're just sort of drifting now. We had held steady for two days, and now we drifted away from our tail facing the sun. Hmm. Okay. Oh, now it's back. All right. Well, uh, let's let's just fly by. There it goes. I don't suppose I put some extra science on here. Probably not. But we could get a probe situation report. I think. I don't know if. Uh, it works for this probe. Now we're not going to fulfill the contract here, obviously. The contract has to be crewed. Hmm. 
Okay, but here we're under the 5,000. So let's just pretend. No, this doesn't have a probe situation report. It's not that kind of probe. It's a guidance unit. That's why it doesn't have SAS. This is what it looks like at our periapsis. If we manage to hit it at this altitude again with the Kerbal. Not a bad view. Oh, no connection because we are out of line of sight with Earth. Okay, now we have communication again as we see the Earth. Let's get out of Lunar SOI and then it's all about the return, which is the critical part. Okay, so here, here our periapsis is 111 kilometers and radial burn might be the best thing to do, but I want to take some speed out of my orbit because why not when you can so maybe I'll focus on that so yeah not the most efficient thing to do but we're gonna be ditching the service module soon anyway and we've got 400 meters per second to use so no need to be efficient on this better to slow down I'm gonna risk taking it lower than before but I, I don't want to go crazy on it so maybe 70 kilometers is the limit for my tolerance on this first pass. Now this might end up being higher than what the Kerbal mission will be at. We'll see. I'll try and remember this number for the apoapsis. Okay. We'll do a bit of a retro before hitting the atmosphere to bring down the apoapsis even further and use up the service module stage. Okay, we are over the Pacific. I'll try and do a retro here. And we're bringing our orbit down quite a lot. I mean, at least in terms of orbital period, which is oh, among the important things. In velocity, not so much, but orbital period is important when making sure we have supplies for our Kerbal. I think I'll let the periapsis drift up a little bit after all. We're taking more out of our orbit than I initially expected we would. Gonna retract these panels. We gotta be dumping, dumping the service module and I don't need more explosions than necessary. Shocking me on the way down. I'm also gonna arm the parachutes already. I don't know what the range of this is. It's only 300 kilometers, so we're liable to not have communication during certain points. Maybe we should try a direct descent, given that, but I don't know. Of course, that's not going to be a problem when we have a crude. I think I'm going to take it to 72 kilometers. I know it, it is probably should be lower, but given the my experience with heating in this particular install, and it might be different for you depending on which version of realism overhaul and real heat you have, but in this install, heating is tough. I'm now going to unlock the battery in this. No good having that locked. We're trying to descend, and we'll work on the hydrazine in a bit. So if we could do this with the Kerbal, maybe we don't need to carry quite as much food, water, and oxygen. Um, there's no indication of how much we actually have, but the, so far this trip has only been six days. And we're going to bring our orbit down, well it's definitely less than two days, and maybe less than one day we can manage it just with uh, using this burn here. Depends how long we get to keep the service module. We want to dump it, let's say, at 150 kilometers just to be safe. So we're not hitting the atmosphere when we try and get rid of it. Okay, we're at 150 kilometers. 
Let me get the periapsis down a bit first, and then we'll dispense with the service module. Stabilize. Okay, shut off. Okay, well, we'll lose 50 meters per second. We were close to one day. We could have probably made it, but... Okay, I'm gonna unlock the RCS fuel here. Tell it to go retrograde on Smart ASS. Because that might work even if I lose connection. Cheating. But anyway. Parachutes are armed. Alright. Separation. Alright. Right now, it's communicating through that. I'm pretty sure. But as we... Well, that'll blow up, so then we're gonna have communication problems. This is already red. <laughs> I mean, this is already this is already looking very bad, isn't it? I think maybe the solar panels clipping into it might be a problem. Well, it's not gonna give me any happy thoughts coming down here. That would be very unhappy situation if uh, bits of the service module collided when the Kerbal was in. So maybe we'll have to ditch it earlier. Oh, and off to the side. I know uh, some people say uh, turn normal and then ditch the service module. That makes sense, I know. I just need to remember to do that. I think the pod just completely exploded. Um, and we weren't even time warping. We had communication even. Um, hold on. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with my install. <laughs> I think there's something wrong here. I might need to take the risk of upgrading all the mods. Yeah. Okay, well sorry about this. Let's go back to the space center. Okay, so maybe it was the fact that I was using a pod that's not meant for return from the moon. But taking a look at the description, I seem to recall something about it being moon capable. Let's just see. But I think I need to upgrade, upgrade the mods to the best that are available for 1.0.4. And that's from experience from my Soul System colonization series where the heat seemed to work a lot better. Uh, with the newer versions. I've resisted that because it changes other things in the mods and will break certain vessels, but I guess I'll go with it. Well, it's just heat shield ready for LEO entries. Okay, so there's ready for LEO entries, it says. Does that mean it'll insta death if it's non LEO entry? I don't know. Let's take a look at where we would get pods that are. Actually, you know, look at this. The max temperature here says 800 degrees. Even this conic cockpit has more than 800 degrees. Does that mean if I put a heat shield underneath the conic cockpit, it has a better survivability than this Mark 1 pod? Hmm. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? We may have to try that. Now, this doesn't have, uh... This doesn't have... Controllability. So this says, you see here, avionics allows control of vessels up to 5 tons. This doesn't. But that just means we have to put the able avionics package anyway. It'd still be lighter than this is. Then again, this doesn't come with the heat shield and this has the heat shield built in. If I put, add a heat shield on it, a separate heat shield, these have a max temperature of 3,200. Which is a heck of a lot better than this thing's 800. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm not going to upgrade the mods just yet because I want to test this theory out. The theory is that I am going to use this crappy conic cockpit whose textures I hate uh, because it's obviously better than this pod and slap a heat shield at the bottom of it and see if it does better on re-entry. I will do it uncrewed obviously. 
And we'll do it on this rocket. Uh, I guess we'll have to come up with a different launch escape system instead of a tower because it's got a pointy nose here. So I'll work on that. And we'll try that out in the next episode, alright? So that is the plan. Let me uh, build that up and we'll see that next time. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.